And again, we're in uh, Luke 15 uh, and uh, dealing with the story of the unprodigal father. <laughs> <laughs> I have renamed the story. <laughs> so we've, we've been talking about the fact that he was already a son. A certain man had two sons, so he's already in the family. Um, and uh, went far off from the father's house and from therefore from the father. And, um, but when he came back, he thought just repentance was what was necessary what was needed he said in his heart i'm going to go back and i'm going to repent and everything's going to be you know good but i'm sure the father will look narrowly upon me from time to time and go watch it son <clears throat> but he got a completely different response even before he ever said anything about i'm repentant so let's look at uh, uh, Luke 15, verse 18, and, and down a little way. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and this is good, and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Okay, so in his mind, his sonship, him being a son, has been voided out, or at least, you know, well, he, he thinks in the father's mind that, that his sonship, or being born again, has been put on a level of being a hired servant now. <clears throat> uh, and uh, no more worthy to be called thy son, make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was, and notice the word but, and not and, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. All right, so this means that the father is looking for his son. But he's looking not just for born-again sons. In each born-again son, each person who is born again, the Father is looking for his son, Jesus Christ, to come out of us, to be the life of us, to be the treasure, and for us to treasure his life within us instead of us being treasuring our status as a son of God or whatever, wherever we uh, put the emphasis. <clears throat> Saw him, had compassion, ran, fell on his neck, kissed him. The, the prodigal had not even an opportunity to say, I'm sorry or I repent. Because the father's heart is, is waiting and looking for his son to come forth. And now, in this return, the father is recognizing that something is about to happen, and it does happen. All right. So that's why, that's why we get the rest of it. <clears throat> and the son said unto him, so now the son finally gets a chance to speak up. I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. Son, But, there's that but again. But, see, every time it uses it, it's going in a completely opposite direction of what the, the son is thinking. What does that tell us? It tells us that in the father's heart, in the mind of the father, in the view, in, in the makeup of the father, he's different than we are, just even if we're born again. And that our goal must be to discover the father beyond the giving father, the provider, the one who has provision for us, and to discover the things that are important to his heart. And any son that begins to mature is going to be thinking more about what's in the heart of his father instead of, you know, what the father can give him. All right. So, <clears throat> um, Verse 22, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. I mean, he, what was the last thing out of his mouth? I am not worthy. I have sinned. I've sinned against you. I've messed up. Well, oh, let's give him the best robe. He sinned. He went against me. He, you know, this is perfect. This is what I want. <laughs> no. The father is seeing something different now. Maybe an openness to the father. Maybe an openness to the son that is within him and not just the sonship that he is. 
Okay. <clears throat> um, best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to make merry. All right. So I want to go over two scriptures I went over a couple of classes back that shows this reality, this reality that there is this fact that we are born again, sons, and yet in the same verses, it describes that there's something more after salvation that God the Father has in his heart for us. And in both of these scriptures, it's going to show for born again sons of God, he wants the son filling them up. That's what he wants. Okay, so let's go again to 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. First John 3, 1 through 3. <clears throat> Behold what manner of love the Father, see, and it didn't say God. It says the Father. This is a, this is a father-son relationship that he's seeking. Uh, the, fa the love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. There's born-again sons of God. If you're born again, whether male or female, you're considered a son of God in that sense. Okay. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. And then, okay, so the, f the first one was, Behold, now, beloved, now, right now, we're sons of God. Do you agree with that? If you're born again, we are son right now, we are sons of God. But it's going to go beyond right now. Do you understand? Watch, watch what it does to us. Now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, and the word appear there is not, you know, the, in the skies. This is the word revelation. It's the same word, for he will be revealed in us. Not just in the sky coming back for us. Okay? Um, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. All right, so what is it saying? It's saying, right now you are called sons of God. You, that's, you know, because you're of new birth, that's what you are. But the Father bestowed that, but he wants to bestow, bestow something more. He wants Christ revealed in us so that we can be like him because we see him as he is, not as religion has taught us. Okay. Now, you know, does anyone here believe that Jesus in his true, pure person is probably so far beyond religion that we can't even imagine it? Yes. <laughs> Come on. He's got to be, you know. So we have to say we're, we're not anti-religion. We're not that. It's not anti-anything. It is I love you, Jesus. I'd like to see you as you are. That's what the scripture's saying here. I'd like to see you as you are. And I'd like my sonship to no longer be my new birth, but your life. Which, by the way, if you're born again, you're born again of incorruptible seed, which is Christ. <laughs> but, you know, just sticking with the, the way the scriptures are flowing here. And if, if that's your hope, seeing Jesus and seeing him as he is and being like him, that hope will keep you and will, uh, uh, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure, because that's going to be the purity of your hope. That's the purity of your hope. And it's not a, it's not a, uh, a worthless or a, um, uh, well, it's not a hopeless hope that uh, will, will I ever. Will I ever be conformed to the image of Christ? Will I ever find him in this manner? Yes, you will. But your emphasis can't be you. It can't be, I want to be, I want to see, I want to come to a revelation of Christ so I'm something special. So I can go to Ireland and impress the people there. 
God help us all. God help us all. It has to be, Lord, I just want you. All right. So the next verse, Galatians 4, 1 through 6. I said we went over these a couple of classes back. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. And don't worry, you got only 10 minutes left in this class. And then like a calf let free, I'll open the gate and you can run wild. <clears throat> Galatians 4, 1 through 6. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we are, verse 6, and because ye are sons, okay, so you have to first be born again, a born again son. Because you are sons, because you are truly born again, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So it begins with new birth. But you can be born again for months or years or decades or so, you know, forever and never get to the place where God sends forth the spirit of his son in you, not getting you saved, but whereby the spirit in you is his spirit crying to the Father to glorify the Father. Nobody can glorify a father like a son. And nobody can glorify the Heavenly Father like the Son. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to read a few little notes. And uh, I'm going to follow a little bit of the line that we did last class where we were talking about the prodigal. You know, he was in the father's house. Therefore, he was born into that house. He was in the family. He goes out. He gets off. He gets into a far country. He gets into a mess. He does stuff he shouldn't do, but he's still born again. You know, did you know a born again person can sin? Okay. But he's not going to just discover how to repent, though that's what he thinks. He's going to come back, and the father is going to start treating him like he wasn't even treated when he was good. Because he's treating him like the son. And he brings him into that reality by the, the, by the altar and the fatted calf. See? And then they're making Mary together, father and son. Okay. So, so the son is in every one of us that are born again. The son was in the prodigal son. And, but he didn't discover it until he began to see it in the father's eyes and the father's actions and the, the robe and the ring and all of this kind of stuff. So, so I'm going to just read this uh, along this line. This story is about the son in us finding his way back to the father. The son. This story is about the son in us. Find, who He's the only one he's going to find the way fully. You understand? Because he is the way. Okay. Uh, about the son in us finding his way back to the father after we have gotten off from uh, off track from him. Okay. All right. Well, this is good news. This is better than repentance. This is Jesus. Okay. If we let the son live and not I, because you can be a born again son and it be you, not I, but Christ is clearer, less muddy water in your life. You know, someone said, well, how do you know if it's Jesus in you? I said, one thing I do know, I always know when it's not Jesus. <laughs> you know, that's where I start from. Oh, that's not, and that's not, okay. You know, so I'm not confused anymore about that. <clears throat> so, if we let the son live and not I, even though I'm living, even though I'm born again, I'm living as a born again son, but it's still I, then he will, he will make his way to the father's house. 
Christ in us, regardless of where we are at, we never have to fear if our heart and emphasis is toward him, not religion, not repentance. It's not, not th- and when I say not repentance, I'm talking about any ritual act, even if it's of God and in the scriptures, is not as good as Christ himself. And he put Jesus in you, not just, you know, not just so he could live in there, you know, it's almost like, it's almost he's like we've put Jesus in solitary confinement. We never let him out in the public. <laughs> but if, if we look to him, if we, in, in our despair and everything else, we go, look, I, I just look to you. I'm not looking for a way out because Jesus is the way out. Because he is the way. And he said, no man cometh unto the religion. Oh, I'm sorry. The Father. But by me. I am the way. I am the truth. Stop looking for the truth. <gasps> Blasphemy. He said, I'm the truth. Look for Jesus as the truth. I'm the life, you know, I'm the resurrection, I'm the, you know, I'm your peace. All of these things, he's saying, I am, I am. And then he says to the Pharisees, you search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life, but they are they which testify the I am. Okay. It's the difference between having your heart set on religious things that you think have magic in them as opposed to Christ. True repentance will come by his heart because we'll break over that and and by his spirit, his spirit, by his spirit. So um, our emphasis is not to turn and now be about the father. Although, if you see the progression, didn't I talk about this? I'm probably going to go over a few minutes here. You, I talked about this progression, and I used the, the uh, Mary of Bethany. And so here she is, and she's at Jesus' feet, and she's like the bride. And she's pouring out on his feet, and she's loving him. The disciples are going, what are you doing? Get up from there and stop wasting that stuff. We can be doing stuff. And her emphasis is him. Well, his emphasis is the Father. So there will be an ascending reality that, that fills this whole thing. The head of every man is God, and the head of the woman is the man, and that, that order. But see, it's a spiritual thing first. It's not just, well, this is the way it is. I'm a, I'm a man. You're going to obey what I say. You know, no, I'm going to follow you while you follow Christ. And if you're not going to follow Christ, then <laughs> I'm going to cry. Anyway, uh, all right, so uh, our emphasis is not to turn and now be about the Father, although that order looks like it is. But it's not. She doesn't emphasize the Father. She emphasizes him, and he emphasizes the Father. Okay, so our emphasis is not to turn now and be about the Father, but the Son. But when it is his time and not ours, anybody remember that little phrase? It's his time. Whatever happened to that? What, what happened? Well, I haven't heard much about it lately. It's when it's his time, not ours. When it's his time, not ours, he, not us, will emphasize the Father. Doesn't he? Just read the Gospel of John and just listen every time. He's, uh, the works I do are not my own, they're the Father. The words I speak are not my own, they're the Father. Uh, I go unto my Father. He didn't say, I'm going to go to heaven now. I'm going to get to go to heaven now. You know, I'm going to my Father. Because that's where his heart is. See, And that's, if he ascends, it's going to be that the Father get the glory in that ascension. Um. Uh, he will make a path. So I'm thinking now of the prodigal son when I wrote this. And the, the son in the prodigal son making a path to the father. He will make a path that leads home. The son will lead to the father. Amen? Amen? The son will lead to the father. At that time, we will not have to make it about the father. 
He will. Okay. So, our emphasis, it's about him, not us. You know, it's about him. Well, I would like it to be warmer in here. It's, it's still about him. You know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, it's still going to be about him. We can't leave that, and we can't change it over to the, the normal progression here is going to be eventually the son will emphasize the father as he's formed in us. Do you see that? Can you at least see how the, when, okay. And because you are sons, God will send forth the spirit of his son in your heart crying out of a father. There it is. There it is. The son is going to emphasize the father. And if you emphasize him enough and where you see him and the hope begins to be fulfilled and, uh, and you begin to be purified by that reality, You'll see him, you shall be like him, for you shall see him as he is. And, he, and the scriptures declare that, you know, when we look into his face, we are changed from glory to glory into that same image, which is the sun. The next step is automatic. You don't have to set a course for the next phase of the Father. It rises like incense to the Father because the son has truly been formed. You see, so you, you, you keep it, from then on, boy, you keep it out of the realm of religion in that sense, and you live by the life of another. You allow the son to, to freedom. And when he gets freedom, you know, his first thing is always towards the father. His first emphasis is always his father. All right, so... The, uh, we see the prodigal son. We see, him, we see him being a son, and he's happy, and he's a good boy when he's at home. Then he goes out. He gets off because he gets far. He gets off because he got far. Does that make sense? Far from the father, far from the father's house. And, you know, that back in those days when they said the father's house, the house of David, it meant the family, you know. Far from the family spirit, then as, as he begins to realize this is really dumb. You know, this has led to nothing. This, I thought just being born again was enough. I thought just being born in the family was enough. So he begins to come back. And because he is a son, the father begins to, as it were, release the spirit of another son in him. There is another son in you. His name is Jesus. That's the son that the father wants. And he begins to rise in the son towards the father. And then it begins to rise as incense. And then it begins to, to manifest as feast. You do not have to know the order to make that happen. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? It's not about figuring out that order and going, oh, i got to get that tape and write down that order. That's not it. It is put your heart for the Lord until that's manifest. And then, then son arises, father is glorified, altar is manifest. It ends up blowing up into a feast. And instead of going, oh, no, not another altar, you begin to make merry. Y'all up for that? Yes. <laughs> so am I. That's, that's what I've been rolling in the last few days. I'm up for that. I'm so up for that. Let's stand together and pray. <clears throat> Father, I thank you that your son is ready to be all that you desire and satisfy you in ways we can't even imagine. But you're waiting on oneness with, from our part to allow that son to uh, truly, it, for it truly to be about you and not us, not to just say that and then make it everything but you. But when, it is, when it's not, we end up in a far country but when it is, we end up in a feast with you, Father. Feast over that which is crucified, that which was slain, 
and risen inside of us as we eat of that sacrifice. Risen inside of us as life in us. And something that we are finally ready to have fellowship with you, Father, based on your son and based on his selfless way of approaching things. We thank you. We bless you. We love you. And we, we set our hearts to stop waiting on oneness and to press in to, to truly make it about you. It's your time, Jesus. And there's no need to do any other time. <laughs> so we love you. <laughs> so we love you. We love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I'm not sure how many of you are going to see Alistair and them before they leave. I